So we're looking at independent and dependent events. And really, we're going to have to identify the difference between the two and then start to solve the different probabilities with them. So independent events, like we've talked about in the previous video with independent and mutually exclusive, the occurrence of one event has no effect on the probability of the other. So if we had a probability of A and B occurring, we can multiply the probabilities together. So let's say we had some numbers that we were going to pull. I have a white pile, I have a black pile, and I wanted to figure out the probability that I would pull a 1 from the white pile and a 2 from the black pile. Now, whenever I pull a number from the white pile, it has no effect on what I'd pull from the black pile. And if you don't think of these as dice so much, I'm not rolling the dice, but think of them as just like numbered, numbered cubes that we're going to pull. Well, I guess numbered cubes would be dice. Just think of them as numbers. They're chips, maybe, in the bag that we're pulling from. So probably I pull a 1 from the white and a 2 from the black. And again, they have no bearing on each other. So really, it's separate probabilities. So the probability from a 1 from the white times the probability of a 2 from the black is what I'm looking for. So there is 1 white out of 5. And there is 1 2 out of the black. So 1 out of 5. So I get a probability of 1 over 25. Now, I could change this. What if I made it instead, let's get a couple more here, made it this and did the same problem. Well, now the probability I pull a 1 from the white and the probability a 2 from the black has changed a little bit. I now have 2 out of 5 and 3 out of 5. And this is going to be 6 over 25. So I found my probabilities. Again, one event didn't affect the other, but we can multiply them. Now, that's independent. If we now look at dependent, we have that these two events are, are related because the dependent events are going to yield conditional probabilities because the probability of the second event is conditional on the one that came before it. So um, our new rule is probability of A time A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B given that A. So when we see that line, we're going to think given that, or you could say if. So that's B given that A. So let's do an example for that one. So let's say they're not numbers anymore, but they're just, they're just blocks. I have white blocks and black blocks. So I'm going to look at the probability that I pull a white then a black if I had these all mixed up. So we're going to cover them up, and I'm going to pick, and the probability I pull a white, then a black. So I know there's five apiece. So when I pull a white one, there's now going to be nine left over, and I could have still five black. Or even if I pulled a black one, I could have, that number could change. So we have to start paying attention to these. So pull a white, then a black. So it's going to be the probability of white, times the probability of a black, given that the first was white. Okay, so what's the probability of us pulling a white from the beginning? Well, I have 10 total, so it's going to be 5 of them are white. Now, if I pulled that white away, and now I've done that first probability, that first event, now what's the probability I pick a black of what's left, of the first one being white that's now gone? Well, I have five out of nine. So because that first event occurred and it's dependent, I now have nine left over. So now I get 25 over 90, which becomes five over 18. Now this is different than if I said, what happens if I pull a white, put it back, and then pull another one? That would be still be independent events. Let's do a different one. Let's say what's the probability I would pull a white, then another one. So that's going to be a white on the first times the probability of a white on the second. Given that, we got a white first. Okay, so I pull a white first. I have a 5 in 10 chance. Now, given that this one was white and it's gone, I now have 4 out of 9 left over. So now we get 20 out of 90, which is 2 ninths.
now let's look at the two-way contingency table bringing up the idea of our dependent events. And also in the video, again, the previous, I'll put a link to that. We went through and did some examples with the two-way table with your and and or mutually exclusive and independent events. But let's look at some dependent. So first one we're going to see is the probability of if we have a van given that it's black. Now this is different than saying van and black because van and black would have been right here. We'd say 16 out of the 200. It's also different than saying van or black. If it was van or black, we would have taken this whole column, this whole row, and then 80 plus 32 minus the overlap of the 200. What we're looking at here is saying, is it a van given that we have a black? So it has to be black vehicle. So it's not going to be out of 200 this time. What it's going to be is instead of the 200 because it's not the total, our now denominator is how many black vehicles there are. And if we cover this up, there's 80 total. So given that it's black, we've eliminated silver and white. If it's black, how many of them are vans? And if that's the case, there are 16 of them that are black. So a van, given that it's black, is 16 of the 80, which becomes 1 fifth. Now, if we said, what is the probability that it's a white, given that it's a car? Not a white and a car, not white or a car. So it now has to be a car. So we can look in our car row. In our car row, there are 100 vehicles. So given that it's a car, it's out of these hundred, how many are white? And that's 52 out of 100, which is 26 out of 50, 6 out of 50, or 13 out of 25. We also see from here it's about 52 percent. So given that it's a car, it is white, is 52% of the cars. Now, that is a lot that's a lot more than if we said if it's a car and white out of the 200. When you get this given that line, you're going to cut down your denominator and it's actually going to be the total of that value that follows it. So this is going to be your new denominator total and it's the number of uh, white cars in that group. Okay? Still going. Let's say silver given that it's a van. So we look at our total number of vans, which is 32. So of those 32 vans, how many are silver? And there are two of those 32, so we get 1 16th. But what if we switched it around? What if it's a van given that it's silver? Now given that it's silver, it has to be in the 20. And how many of those silver vehicles or vans? It's going to be two. So that is one tenth, which we can see is clearly different. So it's paying attention to that order. Again, van was our denominator, the total number. Silver, again, our denominator. What if we had the probability that it's white given that it's not a van? So let's think of what's the probability of not a van first because by the complement that's the probability of or it's one minus the probability it is a van. So not a van is going to be anything not in this row so we could also do one minus 32 over 200 which gives us 168 over 200. So that's how many we have that are not vans. 168 out of 200. So in this category, the not vans, which is actually here, we should have 168 total, which we can see because 168. And really, instead of saying not van, we could say car and truck, but it, it's better to say the not van because then you don't have to list everything if there's multiple categories or multiple values in the category. So 168 is our not van. That's here. Now, how many of those are white. So here I have 52 plus 34, which gives me 86 over 168, which is 43 over 84. OK, 
Okay, on that thought, let's look at our last one here. The probability it's not white and not a van. Well, we know the not a van from our last problem is 168, which are these right here. These values, we've dropped out van. So how many of them are not white? So we can almost cover these up and see we have 36, 28, 12, and 6. So these are vehicles in the not van group, other 168, that are not white. Now, we could use the complement. We found that it was 86 out of 168 was probability of white given that not van. And then just do 1 minus 86 over 168, which was also 1 minus 43 over 84. We can make this into 84 over 84. And we get 41 over 84, which is our answer. So this would be the probability that it's not white, given that it's not a van. Uh, but let's check it the other way. Let's just count them up. I have 36, 28, 12, and 6. I get 82. Now the 82 is out of the 168, which lo and behold comes out to be 41 over 84, which was the same thing we had here.